Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Is Not A Top 10 episode. And it's been a while uh, since I've just done lists kind of back to back to back. But you know what's ended up happening is there was a point in time, if you remember, a couple weeks back where I did kind of early impressions back to back to back and I kind of got on a roll. And um, what uh, I do that from time to time, but what's kind of prompted this version of it is my nose has been a little bit stopped up. There's been some stuff going around. And so uh, I'm falling back on some lists that I've been wanting to do. And one of them I realized that I did not do recently is um, the note of nutmeg. And I've done some spicy video lists where I think I included nutmeg in them, but I never did a standalone nutmeg list. And so um, if you guys know, Everyone knows what nutmeg smells like. I shouldn't say if you guys know what nutmeg smells like. Pretty much everyone has an idea of what nutmeg smells like. It's that very rich, spicy, um, fragrant, you know, you probably associate it with certain foods that it gets put on. Uh, many people associate it with some drinks that you get around Christmas time. Uh, and so the uh, odor description, most people know that kind of slightly sweet, somewhat it can lean kind of in the direction of uh, of cloves, but it has this very warm, um, you know, nuance to it, if you will. It's very warm and earthy and spicy. I mean, I hate to say spicy because nutmeg is a spice, but it is spicy uh, and slightly woody. And maybe even some can pick up slightly floral hints if you have an amazing nose, which, to be honest, I don't get floral hints from nutmeg. Uh, but I do get this, um, you know, earthy, pungent spice, if you will. And I've often said that I love the note of nutmeg in perfume because it uh, ties a bow on the fragrance. It keeps everything in its place. Nutmeg is like the bouncer, you know. It keeps everything where it's supposed to be uh, and puts a nice neat bow on everything when you smell it. Everything stays in the boundaries, right? So this is going to be a big list. So I hope you're sitting down. There's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of fragrances in my collection that use the note of nutmeg. And we're going to talk about some today. But first, we're going to do some unboxings because it's been a while and uh, there's been some stuff showing up at the P.O. Box that I want to discuss. And this one I actually purchased. A couple of them were sent to me very kindly by friends in the community. And so the, let's do the one that I actually bought first. I got this from uh, one of my connects on Mercari, someone that I really trust. I've been working with her for a while and... She had this bottle, and she gave this to me for 20 bucks. So I couldn't really say no at $20 because it's a vintage bottle of a Anique Goutal fragrance. And uh, Anique Goutal is not a house that I have a lot from. I have one from the house. Actually, I'll show you really quick the one that I have. I have a fragrance called... Um, I have a fragrance called Sables, Anique Goutal Sables, which I really like this perfume. It's probably one of my favorite Immortel fragrances, which some people say the dreaded Immortel note, but I don't. I really like Immortel, personally, uh, and the one that I ended up getting is called La Nuit de Hadrian, I believe. La Nuit de Hadrian. Let me, let me look it up real quick. La Nuit Dehadrian. Here we go. Yes, La Nuit's Dehadrian. And there's the bottle. Uh, I like Anique Goutal's old bottle presentation. And of course, anytime I can add a vintage uh, bottle to my collection at a great price, it's very hard for me to say no. Uh, even though this is a citrusy, spicy fragrance, uh, and citrus fragrance, he citrus heavy fragrances are not my favorite. Um, I always try to pick up, a, whenever I get a good deal on something like this that I don't have in the collection, it's hard to say no to $20 uh, for a vintage. It's only a 25 mil, but that's actually perfect for my collection. So my second, Goutal added to the collection. It's supposed to open up very green with some uh, Artemisia and, and stuff like that. But uh, I think this is a citrusy fragrance made for summer, if memory serves. So yes, I'm excited to, uh, to get to know this. So that's the first one. The second unboxing is from um, Rachel. Oh, wait a minute. There is a little atomizer that she gave me. 
and it's lime, basil, and mandarin cologne from Joe Malone. So I've never smelled this, but I do have a couple Joe Malones that I've uh, built up now. So what I will do is when the time is right, we'll do uh, some, some live streams where we sniff the Joe Malones for the very first time. Um, I've got a couple now that I've kind of built up that I've never smelled before. Okay, so this is very kindly sent to me by Rachel, who you all know. Uh, and Rachel has her very first article out on Kaflor. Uh, I, actually, I'm 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 a little bit uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I don't remember the name of the site. Kaflor Bond. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I'm sure someone will be able to link to the article. But uh, she wrote her, she has her first article up. And if I had my phone, if I wasn't uh, recording on my phone, I could just look it up. But I am recording on the phone. Uh, so I'm sure someone can leave it in the comments for anyone if they're interested in reading her first article. Very proud of her. And it's actually a really amazing read. I just got done reading it before I hit play on the video. So let me show you what she very kindly sent me. And I say very kindly because this is extremely kind of her because this juice is beyond precious. Uh, and it's actually something that I've never smelled before. I would, I would love to smell more of the x-rays. So this particular one is, look at this, very kind. Look at this packaging. Beautiful. I love it. So she sent me a... Um, Huge decant uh, of Guerlain's Mitsuko. I love these decants, by the way. The sprayers are absolutely amazing. But not just any Mitsuko. This is a 1950s vintage of the Pure Parfum. Oh, that's going to make a hell of a comparison video. So what we're going to do one of these days is we are going to compare the Pure Parfum, the X-ray of Mitsuko, to the... To the Eau de Parfum, uh, and maybe even to the Eau de Toilette. Maybe we'll do a triple comparison. I've got, once my nose gets back into commission, uh, yesterday it was really, really stocked up. That's actually why there was no video at all yesterday. Um, there was no video at all yesterday, and that was the reason why. Today, my nose is a little bit, I wouldn't say it's back, but it's sort of back. It's coming back, but I didn't trust it enough to do early impression videos so yet. Uh, and so if it continues to clear up, maybe we'll get back to it tomorrow. But I have a ton of comparison videos and early impressions to do. Uh, there is a couple other things she threw in here. So this is one that's called, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to look this up real quick. Indigo by Arquiste. Indigo by Arquiste. Let's see. Arquiste is a brand that keeps popping up on my radar. Um, but I've never smelled anything from them. Indigo. Indigo. There's an indigo smoke. Hmm. Oh, Poe by Arquiste. Let's see. Oh, by, ah, Poe. Here we go. 2021 release. Poe. Yeah. It's a um, powdery, woody fragrance with ambergris, musk, clary sage, pepper, labdanum, amber max. Nice. Uh, I can't wait to try to dive into some of these I've never smelled before. There's also Flor y Canto by Arquise. That's a brand I that keeps popping up on my radar. There must be a reason. I need to dive into them. Uh, Flor y Canto, let's see. Flor y Canto by Arquiste. 2011 release. Mexican Acacia to gets, to, to jeets, sorry, to jeets is the proper way to say it, I believe, leaves. Uh, tuberose Absolute, Southern Magnolia, Frangipani, Copal Resin, Benzoin, and Mexican Vanilla. And then we have uh, Ministry of Society, Black Leather Jesus. You know what? I think I have a couple precious drops of this. 
Uh, I think Jonathan 1970 sent me a little bit of black leather Jesus. I'm gonna have to wear this. Uh, I'm gonna have to wear this, maybe even as my scent of the day, because I hear very good things about it. One of these days, I'm gonna have to wear black leather, black leather Jesus, and do a video for you guys. I'm gonna put this right here at the front so I can remember. Let's see, where is it? Um, it might be right here. We'll put it right here. Black leather Jesus. All right, good stuff. Excellent. Thank you, Rachel. Seriously, that is very, very kind of you. Uh, the Mitsuko is like swoon. And I, there's still some other x-rays I'm on the hunt for. I want to smell the x-ray of things like Samsara. I want to smell Jiki in x-ray. Um, so there's a couple other x-ray. Shamad, I want to smell Shamad in x-ray. So there's a couple other x-rays that are coming up. And then finally, I sent a couple decants to uh, Flay, I think... Another Rachel to make it even more complicated, but she goes by, I think Flava Sauce or Flava. My memory today is just shot. It's Friday afternoon. What do you expect? But um, I'm sure Rachel will leave a comment and I'll be able to pin the comment or something. Um, but Rachel and I got to talking and she um, wanted to smell a couple of the vintage things that I have been talking about on the channel. So I sent her some decants of things like, uh, Azure and Polo Green and Koros, vintage Koros and stuff like that. Um, and she said, Hey man, there's some stuff in my collection that I just don't wear. And I think you would enjoy them. And I said, okay, cool. Send them on. So I sent her some decants and she sent me stuff like this so the first one is this little bad boy which apparently i'm a little out of the loop on but apparently this is an aventus clone does anyone know about this this is a rasasi and it's called um oh what is this one called let me see if i can remember i think it's called i think it's called rums Poor Louis. Oh, let's see. What are you called? What, oh, what are you called? R-U-M-Z. Yeah, R-U-M-Z. Rums. Uh, you can kind of see the name right there. R-U-M-Z. Rums al Rasasi Pour Louis. And this is kind of like, um, it almost feels like it's three dimensional. I don't know if you can feel that, but I believe that this is supposed to be a Rasasi clone, if memory serves. Rums al Rasasi. Yeah, Rums al Rasasi 9325 Pour Louis. What a name! What an absolute name they came up with. Uh, and so, I mean, I can totally get the uh, Aventus feel, that uh, green apple top thing, fruity, fresh. Um, so, yes, this is a, a Aventus clone, apparently. So maybe we'll see another comparison video between... Uh, the King of Entis, which really the King is Koros, but I know some people call Aventus the King, and uh, Rums, R-U-M-Z. Okay, good stuff. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, uh, Rachel. That'll make a fun little video. I'll get to know this. I know some people don't talk about clones on their channel, but I don't, uh, I don't mind. I mean, I usually don't go out of my way. But there are some, there's actually a clone on, there's actually a um, Latafa fragrance on this list, albeit this is a very long list, so I really should get moving on it, but, um, all right, let me just put the box over here, I'll get to that later. You can go live with your, um, you can go live with your Aventus friends. Okay. And then she sent me a decant of a Beaufort called Lignum 
Vite. I've never tried this one before. This will make for more fun blind sniffing whenever my um whenever my nose returns. Let's see, lignum. I have to save it as on my decant list or I'll forget about it. Lignum Vitae 2016 Beaufort release. A gourmand Beaufort, a gourmand woody with berries, pepper, pastry note, caramel. Oh, that's going to be insane. Frankincense, sand, salt, vanilla. Wow. This will make for a fun one. All right, I'm going to put you right up front next to Black Leather Jesus. I don't know. We have a Fragalanche. This is the problem with putting decants up front. Come on, baby. Stand up. There we go. Ah. Okay. And then we had some, we had some Mars, Mar Olfactif, which is a house, I have a couple, um, I have a couple of their sample sets, or I have a couple of fragrances inside of a sample set from them. So Mar Olfactif will go on the list. And we're gonna test out this brand at some point on the channel. We'll probably do, there's one full bottle called Waking Dream. Are you guys familiar with this one? It's a house that I rarely see people talk about. Uh, Waking Dream. So, and then there's about four samples here. So I'll either do some individual videos or we'll do a, uh, a live stream where we sniff a bunch of them out at once. But, um, Waking Dream is a 2022 release. This is actually one, interestingly enough, this is one that I do not have a sample of. So this will be this will be awesome to get to know. It's filled with synthetic notes. It's iris. They claim mysore sandalwood, alpha ionone, dihydro beta ionone, benzyl acetate, alpha uh, pinene, hedione, benzoin, labdanum, patchouli, clearwood, isoe super, ethyl vanillin. Hydro, hydroxymethylferferol, pyrolone, clary sage, amble, cephalus, bicyclononalactone, globanone, sylvamber, and tracelide. I've never seen a note listing so filled with uh, synthetics before. Doesn't mean it's bad. I don't think synthetics are necessarily bad, but it's all in how they're used. So, uh, another one to talk about on the channel. Excellent stuff. Thank you again, uh, Rachel. It's a blessing to have such amazing subscribers. The only downside is running out of space to put things. Um, I need another, I need another uh, shelf. Where should I put you? Where do you want to live? You're pretty much out of room. Um, here, you can live right here for now. You can live right up in here. All right, I'll, I'll find a better home for you at, at some point soon. And finally, finally, there is one last, the one that basically spurned the whole, um, the one that spurned the whole thing with um with Rachel and getting the the you know she reached out when I did a video on this and this is the one I'm probably most excited to add to the collection because this is a vintage bottle of Vetiver Extraordinaire by Dominique Ropion and I just did a video on this uh and I really enjoyed this one Probably one of the best vetiver fragrances on the market. Now, this is a pre-Estee Lauder bottle, and there's probably 20, 25 mils left in there, which is perfect for me. It's absolutely perfect for my collection. I can still wear it and get to know it. 
But go check out my review or early impression, if you will, of uh, Vetiver Extraordinaire. So thank you, Rachel. Seriously, that's good stuff. Uh, amazing to have friends like you guys. Very blessed. Thank you to anyone who's ever sent me anything. And if you've sent me stuff before and I have not gotten to it yet, I promise I will very, very soon, hopefully. So let's get into this because this is going to be a long video. Let's do Scent of the Day first. Uh, and Scent of the Day is... Again, something I wouldn't have found without the friends in the community. I did pay for this, but um, I mean, I am just loving, I'm loving this fragrance. It's instantly one of my favorite oud fragrances. And what's crazy about it is I, I have an early impression. I have a review up on the channel, uh, or not really a review, but a first early impression video, if you will. And I said it was okay. I don't think I really understood it at the time. Russian Adam sent me a little small, you know, like a mill, just enough to kind of spray and, and smell it for the, for the first time. But this is not the type of fragrance that you put on your skin just once and really understand. It's called Chinese Oud, and this is a 10 mil. Uh, look at this beautiful, I mean, it literally looks like it's cut out of a real piece of wood. You can almost see the spiral in the wood right there. Just a beautiful presentation with the Chinese writing here. And apparently the story is that the oud here is a, is a, is oud from a, a real wild uh, type of Chinese agar wood that is not plantation grown. It was found in the wild. And, um, you know, the, the person who donated the oud or that Russian Adam got this very rare type of oud from, it was distilled all the way back in 2003. So it's 20 year old oud distilled. And um, he also uh, donated some oud for Inverno Russo which is also one of my favorite uh, Russian Adam creations, believe it or not. But this is, it opens up very aldehydic. It's almost like imagine if aldehydes were oud. I know that sounds crazy, but imagine you're smelling something where when you first spray, the aldehydes that hit you smell like aldehyde oud. It smells like if aldehydes were oud, right? And then as the oud kind of continues to growl forward from beneath it, it doesn't it doesn't hit you in the face with this punchy, hardcore oud. The oud kind of very slowly and gently um, kind of comes forth until it fully takes control of the composition. And it turns into this very woody, spicy, uh, probably one of my favorite woody fragrances of all time. This is a very woody composition. Uh, there's also little bits of smoke that comes up. There's little bits of florals that come up that smell exotic. I've never smelled Chinese Rose Otto. I've never smelled Chinese Jasmine Absolute. I've never smelled Chinese Gardenia CO2. Uh, so, so all of these things that I've never smelled before, uh, these type of florals make the fragrance feel like nothing I've ever smelled. It's interesting. The, the ingredients smell so high quality, like the highest quality ingredients you could imagine. Like, you know, uh, this is for the frag heads that really want to kind of take the next step, in my opinion. And I am just loving Chinese Oud. That's my scent of the day today. All right, so let's get started. Let's stick with the Riz La Dore on the Nutmeg Kick. This is not a top 10 Nutmeg edition. And so this is um, Oud Picante. Now, another one I have a video of, except this one, I said I did not like it very much. It was hard for me to wear the first couple hours. Very spicy, lots of spice. And Nutmeg is actually part of that early um, spice melange that just hits you with cumin, cardamom, cinnamon, clove. I've done individual videos now on cinnamon and clove. I don't know if I've done one on cardamom yet, but I know I've done one on uh, cinnamon, clove, and cumin, I believe. So uh, nutmeg that we're doing today is one of the last. This is not a top 10. And ultimately, we will rank this list at some point. So this is the unranked list. Remember, this is just fragrances in my collection that have that nutmeg note. So Oud Picante is uh, number number one on the list, and again, unranked. And then the second one we're gonna talk about is Atlantic Ambergris. And we're gonna to get to a couple composition where I'm gonna say this one is very nutmeg heavy. Like if someone's interested in really hunting down the nutmeg heavy fragrances, uh, this is the first one I'm gonna put on that list of, this one is really one to put an asterisk to if you're kind of keeping along, playing along at home, if you will, keep taking notes. Atlantic Ambergris, and it could be in any form actually because I've got it in multiple forms. Again, thanks to Rachel. Rachel sent me this, which is a Riz La Dore Atlantic Ambergris 2. So he's put out number one. He put out in 2007. 
And then he also did Atlantic Ambergris Part 2 in 2021. And they're both, to my nose, I, I can smell almost zero difference. Actually, I'm pretty sure that he has said that um, the ingredients and the, uh, you know, uh, notebook that he used that he used to do the ingredients and then make the fragrances is the same for Atlantic Ambergris and it's the same for Ottoman Empire. It's the same for, it's the same uh, composition every time. They just have to remake it because they use you know he uses the ingredients one time and then that's it. So when he does it a second time, it has to be distilled again basically. But the ingredient distillation process is the same. But because the ingredients are a little bit different. Every distillation can be slightly different, but the note listing and everything is exactly the same from Atlantic Ambergris 1 and 2. And to my nose, I smell very little difference, but this is a huge nutmeg uh, fragrance to me, a nutmeg bomb. Uh, I get a bunch of nutmeg and uh, probably one of the best Ambergris fragrances that is in my collection, even though I don't have a bottle uh, that, I, that I've smelled. My other favorite Ambergris heavy composition is uh, Ombre uh, Supreme by Lesson Demo Dables. But uh, you get little green touches here because there's Russian pine, there's also cardamom. So the cardamom, the nutmeg, the clove mixes with this white floral. There's champaka and jasmine sambac, and it mixes with that real Irish white Ambergris. It's a stunning composition, but much darker and deeper and richer than uh, ombre supreme if you were expecting something that is kind of just sparkly like sunshine sparkling off the ocean go for ombre supreme okay next on the list we have ottoman empire and i'm going to say the same thing about ottoman empire as i said about um atlantic ambergris i have the original ottoman empire here from 2017 um oh god love to have a bottle of this oh man and also this is uh Ottoman Empire Part 2. And I'm pretty sure I have videos up on Ottoman Empire on the channel. Um, and probably one of my favorite rose ouds I've ever smelled. I really would love full bottles of some of this stuff, but sometimes you gotta get juice where you can get, get it with these really hard to find, you know, um, limited edition of Rige La Dore's. Uh, it is basically multiple type, in a nutshell, multiple types of rose, multiple types of oud, amazing sandalwood, amazing amber. Uh, it's this ambery, oriental, uh, just a, I love Ottoman Empire. It's almost indescribable for me. Uh, there's white rose and frangipani water and just multiple types of oud. It's a, it's a great fragrance for the person who wants to kind of take the next step and has been wearing, you know, you want to go into real oud fragrances. This is a great kind of uh, starter, but the problem is it's hard to find and very sought after, but I love Ottoman Empire. It's a huge perfume. Oh God, it's so, so good. Captivating. And again, this has nutmeg in the heart and both Ottoman Empire one and two and three. And I think there's even a part four or maybe part four coming. I can't remember. Um, all the note, the, the uh, list, the, um, uh, you know, ingredients that, that he uses in there are the same throughout all of them. I don't, I don't detect differences when I smell different, uh, different versions. Okay, next on the list is a house that I just did a live stream. So I just did a live stream and uh, we've talked about this house actually across a couple live streams. And one of the fragrances in the collection has a nutmeg note and it's called Midnight Datura. Now Midnight Datura is actually um, geared towards women. It's a feminine targeted fragrance, but I thought it was very unisex. I thought anyone could wear this. There is some sweetness to it. The heliotrope mixed with the violet, um, mixed with that vanilla, gave it a little bit of a Le Bleu vibe, like a, think of a niche version of Le Bleu. Now, uh, I'm not saying this smells like Le Bleu. I'm just trying to get you in the ballpark, okay? If you like something like Le Bleu, you'll probably at least somewhat like Midnight Detura. I think Le Bleu is obviously a much better fragrance, but um, this adds some more modern notes like rum and stuff like that. They, they try to modernize it with the liqueur note. Uh, it was made by Lisa Fleischmann of Simrise, and there, there is a Detura note in here, which is a poisonous flower. This whole... Uh, original Parfums Cortana line is called the 
uh, Fatal Potions line, uh, Les Potions Fatales line, and uh, the the fatal the fatal flower in here is Datura, and um, there is tuberose and stuff like that, but it's not super feminine. I think uh, I think anyone can wear that. I enjoyed that one. I thought it was a good fragrance. Um, probably one of my favorites from that six. I tested six that day, and that was probably one of my favorites. The next day, though, I tested two more, and those two I tested that day were my favorite. Number one was. Uh, um, Wolfsbane, which is not here because there was no nut nutmeg note. But number two was their newest release from 2022 called Irfante. And Irfante is probably one of my favorite from the brand along with Wolfsbane. And you can see right here in the top, there is a nutmeg note in the very top. But it smells like you're smelling this um, jet fuel. You can see there's an astronaut on the front. There is this almost like uh, burning clean. You know how jet fuel is supposed to burn really clean? There's this clean burning jet fuel with suede, this leathery, almost like, a, you know, again, a niche take on Fahrenheit. I uh, hate to invoke another vintage fragrance, but uh, if you like stuff like Fahrenheit, oh shit, I just threw it. Hang on. Let me find it. I'll never find it if I don't get it now. Okay. We've got men down here, boys and girls. We've got men down. Come on, baby. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, everyone lived. No casualties. No casualties. But uh, yes, Purcell has put this on his top 10 fragrances of 2022. Irofante, and I completely see why. I like it, but it would be a hard sell to get a full bottle at 200 bucks or whatever it is, 225 for 50 mils when I already have multiple bottles of Fahrenheit, you know. Uh, but it is a it is a really well-made fragrance. So Iorfante is the next on the list. After Iorfante, we're gonna jump to a fragrance that I've never actually smelled. So this will be either in an early impression video or on a live stream. It's from a house called Histoise de Parfum, one of the very early niche houses. This house has been around for a while, and this fragrance has been around for a while, too. All the way back in 1999, this fragrance came out, and this is called 1828. So they started taking the name away, which means this is an older decant. Uh, they no longer call these, you know, Casanova, Jules Verne, anything like that. Now it's just the name, just the year. So 1828 is all this is called now. And it's supposed to be the spicy, fresh fragrance with eucalyptus in the top, with citruses and nutmeg and pepper in the heart, and then this woody frankincense. They say there's pine tree, a pine tree cone note in the base. So we'll see how that plays out. I'll be interested to test that one day, but uh, apparently it's supposed to be kind of like an easy to wear masculine, spicy, woody fragrance. Uh, and then we've got some Bortnikoffs. And one of them I have a video on, and one of them I don't. So one of them we'll be doing either in a live stream or early impression. The one that I have the video on is actually one of the harder Bortnikoffs to come by. It's called Bonea. And Bonea is a spicy, resinous... It was one of those that uh, I think I really enjoyed the wear, but it didn't move me enough where I want to run out and go buy a bottle. But if you... Um, if you're, again, kind of keeping notes on this, uh, making an asterisk next to the really spicy, heavy nutmeg spice ones, Bonaire may be one to put on your list. I think this is um, has a lot of nutmeg in the heart, but uh, there's some that very interesting, you know, Bortnikoff floral aspect is at play here as well. He um, He's put frangipani and tajits and champaka flower and stuff like that, violet. So there's a very interesting floral composition as well. And then the other Bortnikoff is from 2020, and it's called Moss Cologne. This is the one I've never smelled before, so we'll do a first impression or something on a live stream one day. Moss Cologne is a woody, spicy, uh, four different citruses it opens up with, bergamot, lemon, orange, and grapefruit, with oak moss, absolute, violet leaf, um, jasmine, champaka flower, and nutmeg in the heart. And that nutmeg, again... Um, is in the heart, which is usually where you'll see these spicy notes. Um, Ylang Ylang, Oak Moss, Ambergris, Atlas Cedar, Virginia Cedar, Labdanum Tonka, and Vanilla. And Bortnikoff is uh, is discontinuing some scents lately 
So rumor is Ud Maximus and Ud Monarch are both discontinued, along with potentially even Musk Khabib. So I hope everything's okay with him. He's in our thoughts and prayers. Um, but uh, but yes, it's uh, it's it's sad to see some of my favorite Bortnikov's gone. But I can't can't wait to see. I know there's supposed to be some collaborations, hopefully coming with the Rizla Dore, uh, and you know uh, he has his own new products coming out very soon. So I'm hoping that. Uh, he's got some good stuff for us very soon. Uh, next on the list is the only Ensar Oud on the list. And this one, I actually have a video up on the channel. And uh, it's of, I'm, I don't want to call it a flanker, but it's almost like a take on the uh, original. So the original of this is called Ensar Oud EO1. And, but this version is not the original E01, it's called E01 Assam. And I ended up actually buying a full bottle of the original Ensar Oud E01. I like the original more actually than the Assam version, if you will. Uh, the original was more to my taste. You know, Ensar uses animalics in a lot of his fragrances, but his use of animalics is very... Um, soft. It's very slight of hand. You know, he doesn't put that heavy animalic touch that I like very, a lot of the times like the Riz La Dore does. And this Assam uh, flanker, if you want to call it that, or iteration of EO1 is even more, I would say, uh, it's even less, the animalics are even less toned down than the original EO1. I like this because more of the leathery facets tend to come out. Uh, this is still a good fragrance. I still liked EO number one Assam. I would wear it. It still has the leathery aspects, but it didn't move me enough to want to go buy a bottle uh, like just the number one did. But uh, EO number one Assam, I have a review up on the channel if you want to check that out. Oh, and thanks to um, Nissan for sending me this very kind decant of a very expensive fragrance to talk about. Um, okay, next on the list we have a Mansara. And this is one I have not done a video on, but maybe I will one day because it's always it's always fun to do these fragrance uh, reviews where, you know, it gets hyped in Fragcom. But, you know, a lot of the real Fraghead, and I, I, that doesn't sound right. Real Fraghead doesn't isn't isn't a fair thing to say. I would say the people who really get into the hobby uh, as a as an obsession, as an addiction, sometimes kind of thumb their noses at some of the stuff that gets hyped big in the community and this is one of them. It's from the House of Mansara, and it's called Red Tobacco. And again, I must admit, I think this is one of the better Manseras. And um, if you can take the way that fruity notes are done in fragrances like Leighton or Aventis or, you know, something like that, some of the other uh, hype beasts in the community, you might really like uh, Red Tobacco. There's a huge apple-peach combo that makes it smell like you're smelling a Parfums de Marly. Frankincense and saffron, nutmeg. They claim there's Nepalese oud in here with patchouli, jasmine, tobacco, amber, gaiac wood, vanilla, vetiver, and musk. And it's a huge fragrance. This stuff lasts forever on your skin. It's a beast mode fragrance. But it feels like the fragrance is like it's not complete to me. Like very, uh, almost like uh, they just kind of mixed a couple things together and called it a fragrance, but they never actually finished the blending process. It's it's a tough one for me. On one hand, I like it because I like, uh, if you like 80s fragrances that are big, bold, loud, you know, this will kind of appeal to that side of you. But on the other hand, I feel like, you know, they they didn't spend enough time to give it, you know, with red tobacco like they should have. So, but I'll, I'll talk about that in the review. And then we've got a Maitrier Parfumé Agantier fragrance, MPG, which is a brand I actually uh, only own one bottle and it's like, there's only five or 10 mils left. I got it from Rich Mitch and, um, and you know, it's, uh, it's a brand I would love to dive into more because it's speaking of old niche brands, you know, it's even older than Histoire de Parfum. It's one of the original niche brands, if you will, along with La Tizan Parfumère. And so this one's called Ombre Presso. Ombre Presso. And Ombre Presso is an out and out amber. It's like one of the reference ambers, right? So, um, you know, if you like the way that Francis Kirkjohn does um, that amber that uh, everyone hypes, I keep thinking sealed to gum, but it's not sealed to gum. It's, uh, oh, now I'm going to have to look it up. 
Now I'm going to have to look it up because I mentioned it. Grand Soir. If you like Grand Soir, this is like a much better version. Uh, I'd rather wear this than Grand Soir all day, every day. Grand Soir is kind of boring to me. Uh, this is a little bit more interesting. I feel like um, I feel like it just does a little bit more. There's some lavender in here. There's some myrtle. And of course, there's the uh, nutmeg in the heart. There's no nutmeg in uh, Grand Soir. So I feel like this just does a little bit more. There's Peru balsam, Tolu balsam, and the brand claims ambergris as well. So... Um, so that is that is uh, a reference amber for you amber lovers. And then there's a Tom Ford. So we're, we're getting into some things I actually don't show on the channel very much here in this video. And this is called Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. So Noir Extreme is a hype beast in the community. Um, it's actually listed as top 10 in the in the men's as far as Parfumo goes as top 10 in the in the in the most popular men's perfumes right now and this is a sweet gourmand and that's the reason why I think it's hyped is because it's so easy to just wear there's this there's this sweetness to it um you know it's a compliment magnet if you will I have a hard time wearing stuff like this because I wear perfumes for me and this is a little bit boring uh in the fact that I don't like sweet fragrances number one and so there's this kulfi note, there's this kulfi note in the uh, heart, which I think is supposed to be this, um, uh, kulfi is supposed to be some sort of like, uh, some sort of a dessert, like a frozen dairy dessert from India. And, um, so... I can't say I, I know what kulfi tastes like or smells like because I've never had kulfi before. But all I get is kind of this generic sweetness. Now, uh, in the cold, you might be able to pull this off. But to me, it smells too mass appealing to be a Tom Ford. That's why I just have this little decant so I can kind of get to know it and talk about it. It's 10 mils, to be fair. It's not that little. But, uh, but yes, I'll do a video on it one of these days. But a lot of times, I'm like, uh, it's not my thing, you know. And then there is a Nishane fragrance that we're going to do in a live stream or early impression one of these days. And this is called Wulong Cha. And Wulong Cha came out in 2014. It's a take on a, on a tea fragrance. There's oolong tea in here with nutmeg and citruses and musk and fig and stuff like that. And then we've got a house that, again, I only talked about really once when I wore Sheepra number no. one as my scent of the day. Uh, and honestly, I wasn't super impressed. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't, my expectations were here because everyone was talking about how great this house is. And so far, we still have to see how these go. But this is from the house of uh, Darren Allen Perfumes. And this particular fragrance with nutmeg is called Bathory. Bathory. And I don't know when it came out, but it's uh, Rose. It is uh, Bulgarian Rose Otto with Saffron, Black Currant Bud, Absolute. Uh, honey. Hungarian Bell Pepper. Which I don't know how I feel about bell peppers in my uh, perfume. I like it in food. Uh, nutmeg, Beeswax, Absolute, Dragon's Blood, Leather, Deer Musk, Civet and uh, frankincense absolute so the note listing sounds like it's right up my alley so we'll have to see we'll have to see how how the nutmeg note is done in the heart of bathory and then we have some fragrance dubois which again is another brand that only really popped up on my channel once when armando sent me some for blind sniffing now he also sent me these little decants, so these little samples, these two mil samples. So the first one is called Oud Violet Intense. And Oud Violet Intense came out in 2013. And apparently, um, Fragrance Dubois owns, you know, Oud Tree Fields, if you will. They own plantations of Oud uh, trees. And they actually list it right here in the note listing. You can see right there it says Ocularia, uh, Agarwood, 
Ocularia Krasna, Agarwood Oil. Um, and I think some of the beef uh, that Fragrance Dubois gets over the, over the years, from what I know about them, is that their fragrances don't smell like they have the type of oud that you get in Russian Adams fragrances, for example, or Ensar's perfumes, or Bortnikov. Much of the oud in Fragrance Dubois is done as like this clean oud style. Which again, doesn't mean that the oud's not there, because it's clearly there. They wouldn't put it there if it wasn't there. But it smells, it doesn't come across as, um, uh, as you know, being like this big heavy-handed oud. It's, it's kind of an easier to wear oud, if you will. Uh, but these are very expensive fragrances. They are extremely expensive. Uh, you know, eye-gouging eye expensive. And so we'll see if I thought this was worth it. I hated, uh, absolutely despised Fragrance Dubois Heritage. I thought it was one of the worst fragrances I've ever smelled, and I blind sniffed it. So if you go watch that video, you'll see where I just annihilate it, you know, um, uh, while I'm wearing it, and then come to find out it's like a $600 fragrance. And I was like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, this one is Mandarin Orange, Black Pepper, Elemi Resin, Frankincense, Tonka Bean, Nutmeg, Oud, Cistus, Musk, and Amber. And then we've got Oud Blue Intense. Of course, got to throw the Intense in there, right? Oud Blue Intense. And Oud Blue Intense is uh, Cardamom, Nutmeg, Mandarin Orange, Frankincense, um, Cistus, Myrrh, Amber, Apopinax, more Myrrh, Styrax, Benzoin, and Oud. So we will see, we will see how these work out. I don't like these samples though. This, the way they close is annoying. And then finally we got Oud Vert Intense. And Oud Vert Intense is uh, Met Mediterranean Bergamot, Bergamot on a vacation, Madagascan Ginger, Sri Lankan Cardamom, all three of them are on a vacation, Coriander seed, nutmeg, green geranium, as opposed to regular geranium, green geranium, oud vetiver, cedar, and musk. And this is made by Oliver Peshaw. Um, So Oliver Peshaw makes a lot of fragrances for diptyque and stuff like that. So I'll be excited to see how these work out, what these are like. Sorry, I'm knocking stuff. I'm knocking stuff over here again. It's hard. You guys can't see this, but I am surrounded by perfumes and on this table. And every move I make knocks stuff over. So I do apologize. I don't want to leave it because I'll end up putting a bottle on it and breaking it or something. And then we have this little bad boy, which I have another sample as well, but I'll probably end up using this one first in the review. It's called Haksan. And this was very kindly sent to me by my friend Lee from Fragnanimous. I think he sent this to me when I actually bought something, or I can't remember if he sent me some free samples to, to try. This might have been part of it. Haksan's from Prin, uh, Parfum Prisana, Prin Parfums. Um, and it's supposed to be this um, green, spicy fragrance. They, and if you know Prin, he doesn't really do note pyramids. They just throw notes at you in a, in a you know, just in a blurb. Chamomile, saffron, galbanum, lavender, rosemary, clary sage, marjoram, vermouth, sage, jasmine absolute, cypress absolute, fir balsam, spruce, beeswax absolute, elemi thyme, basil, oregano, frankincense, lavender, goat's hair, styrax, apopinax, nutmeg, and the list goes on like that for, you know, uh, just as long as what I read. Big note listing, but most, I don't, I don't really enjoy the way that a lot of the prins uh, use spices. They remind me of lot, a lot of Oud Picante. Um, I have a video up on Antamara, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to give the brand a chance, but it's not my favorite. I'd much rather wear Russian Adams Work or Bortnikov or something like that. And then a couple from the Spirit of Dubai set, and I have videos on all of these on the channel. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the leather one. The leather one is called, it's the green one, it's called Maidan. And Maidan came out in 20... Oh, jeez. Dropping stuff. It came out in 2015. And Maidan's the one I was actually most excited about. I thought I was really going to like Maidan. As it turned out, it wasn't for me. Uh, it was just... 
it smell, you know, it definitely didn't smell worth the price, I'll tell you that. And if I'm going to wear a leather, honestly, I would just rather wear some of my favorite 80s leathers is what it came down to. This sort of modern Middle Eastern leather, I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it is the thing. The nutmeg is in the top, again, along with the million notes, and there's Hedy Own and Cashmoran and Oud and tobacco and leather and all a million notes. You would say, oh, Ramsey's going to love this. And I thought it was okay, but... You know, I uh, I don't think I would pay the price for it. If money was no issue, I would have a bottle, sure. But, um, you know, since money is limited and you have to kind of spread your money around, I don't think I would go full bottle here. I definitely wouldn't go full bottle here. This is called Ramal. And Ramal is an oriental spicy fragrance that some people compare to um, Falcon Leather by... Uh, by uh, that brand I hate, Maitrier Premier, or whatever it's called. Um, I've never smelled Falcon leather that I can remember. Actually, Ramal reminds me a little bit of, uh, there was a fragrance that I smelled on a live stream for the very first time from the house of Elisir, and it was called uh, Desired, or Des Desiree, or Desire, Desire, I think, um, and it's in the same ballpark as that, you know, uh, this huge oriental, spicy, sweet, lots of saffron, lots of vanilla. The nutmeg here is in the top. There's caramel and oud, and it's it's that kind of Middle Eastern style fragrance. If, if you've smelled some of the initios or stuff like that, you'll kind of know the style. Not my favorite style, I can tell you that. And then we have... Let me put these away so, again, I don't lose any of these. Okay, go back to your home. Okay, next on the list we have uh, a decant that was very kindly sent to me by Anuj at Enchante Perfumes. Thank you, Anuj. Everyone knows Anuj. If you're looking for vintage scents, go to EnchantePerfumes.com. He's one of the good guys. Let's put it that way. Um, and this is Sergio Saldano for men. This is the black, they call it. Um, it's known as black, but I think the official name is just Sergio Saldano for man. This is one I need to talk about on the channel soon. I probably should have a bottle of this. It's a um, woody, green, musky, spicy thing. Dries down to a huge oak moss and nutmeg uh, and patchouli. So yes, I need to do a video on that coming up very soon. And then there's a uh, Ducita that I hope to do a video on as well. It came out last year. It's called Montre. So this is one that I need to do a video on very soon. It's a spicy, woody floral. There's some dried fruits in here. There's saffron, cinnamon, uh, and the nutmeg note is in the top. So uh, Petit Grand, there's a leather note in here with oud and patchouli. I have very high hopes for this. Very high hopes. But I hardly see anyone talk about Montre, so... I'm hoping it's just, I've just never stumbled across good reviews of it. But um, but yes, Montre by Ducita. And then, next on the list, in the final, the, uh, actually, we're going to get to the full bottles here. Let's get to the full bottles. Okay, so full bottle number one, finally. The moment you've all been waiting for an hour into the video. Uh, this is Aramis Tobacco Reserve. Discontinued, fetches hundreds to three hundred dollars on eBay already. Uh, I think I paid sixty-five bucks for this. This is a hundred and ten mil, uh, spicy, smoky, woody tobacco. Beautiful tobacco, but mostly fruity. Okay, so it's a fruity take on a tobacco with iris. Iris is the secret weapon here, and iris makes everything feel posh and smooth and elegant. Okay smells extremely high class for what it is, and yet it's very um, uh, very wearable. It, it smells like, you know, the Tonka in this makes it smell slightly designer, but the ingredients come across as being higher class than your average designer, and that's the thing. I really enjoy this, and in 2018, this really went against the grain. Perfume companies were not doing uh, fragrances like Aramis Tobacco Reserve in 2018, okay? Um, so this kind of went against the grain and it got discontinued, but I think for a fraghead who loves tobacco, this is one of my favorite tobaccos to wear. 
It's so good. So, so wearable. Aramis Tobacco Reserve and, and um, Tobacco Leaf, Black Currant, Nutmeg, Iris, Tonka Bean, Clary Sage. It's just beautiful. Now, I have a, um, a friend. I'm just going to call him a, a fragrance friend who reached out and said I've, he's got access to a ton of Serge Luton's. He wants to send me uh, just as a thank you for the channel. And I just could not say no. Obviously, some of these are very hard to come by, especially in these older bottles like this. And so thank you to you know who you are. Uh, you have an open invitation to come on the channel anytime, my friend. I'd, I'd, I'd love to kind of pick your brain and, and hear your thoughts. And I know you've been in the industry for decades. So thank you. Thank you very much. But one of the brands or one of the fragrances that he sent me that I've never smelled before is Fleurs de Orangeur. And I need to spend some more time with this. Apparently, this is an amazing fragrance for the high heat. It's floral. It's spicy. It's got hibiscus seed. Indian tuberose, cumin, and that cumin, I think, makes it completely unisex. Um, when I first smelled this, I thought maybe it was one for the wife, maybe it was, you know, too floral, but now that I've sprayed it a couple times before bed, uh, I think that, you know, this would smell amazing on a guy, and so I just need to kind of wear it more. There's lemon zest, there's white rose, jasmine, orange blossom with that nutmeg note and cumin, and so fleurs de orangeur. Next Serge Luton with nutmeg is Etabi. Now Etabi in a nutshell is basically um, Christmas cake. If you've ever smelled Christmas cake with, um, if you've ever smelled Christmas cake with those little like candies in them almost, you know, like, uh, like um, uh, jelly beans or, or, you know, how Christmas cake sometimes has those, those candies in them. That's what Etabi is seems like to me uh, when I spray it. Uh, it's a spicy oriental with uh, resins and dates. There's a date note, there's benzoin, there's dried fig, there's clove. There's that candied mandarin peel, um, cumin, which I reason I said candied mandarin peel like that is it actually shows up again, uh, I think in other Serge Luton fragrances. It may be in... Um, Baptime de Fa, if you've ever smelled that's an insane fragrance. Maybe in Baptime de Fa, there's myrrh, there's sandalwood, tobacco, tonka bean, cedar, cistus, and nutmeg. And the only thing about this that makes it um, not one of my favorite Serge Luton's is the sweetness. It is a little bit sweet, but uh, for a Christmas Day scent or something like that, this would be absolutely beautiful. Beautiful oriental, you know, as usual, daring Serge Luton. And then... Probably my favorite cinnamon fragrance of all time. Um, this is just, I mean, uh, if I haven't ranked my cinnamon fragrances yet, this is gonna, this is, if not number one, top two for sure. This is called Roos. I'm pretty sure I put this number one if I ranked my cinnamon fragrances already. I can't remember. But Roos uh, is a 2007 release. It's woody, spicy. Amber, mandarin orange, nutmeg, cedar wood, and cinnamon. But the cinnamon is the star of the show. It's cinnamon through and through. Just, um, uh, I think, a perfect execution. And yet, even though it's just cinnamon, you would think, oh, it just smells like, you know, Red Hots or something from the movie theater. No. There's an element of, um, there's an element of class here, too. And I don't know how Serge Luton did it, but Christopher Sheldrake is a, is a genius. So good, and it has that cedar wood note that I've found over and over in Serge Luton. I absolutely love. Let me shut the window real quick. No free show to the people staring through the window outside. Okay, next on the list. Next on the list, we have three Guerlains in a row. So the first one with nutmeg is Guerlain's Vetiver, one of the uh, most classy masculine fragrances you'll ever smell. This is just class in a bottle. Everything from the bottle design. Um, uh, 
you know, if you look at the bottle like this, you don't actually think much of it, right? Just kind of a, looks like a standard boring bottle, but when you look at it from the side, you realize how detailed and intricate the bottle actually is. And each one of these is supposed to represent a different stage in a man's life. And this is um, the reference vetiver for me. And, you know, I think even Vetiver Extraordinaire that came out 50 years later is trying to live up to this. You know, this is the, the gold standard of Vetiver. Orange, bergamot, lemon, nutmeg, pepper, Vetiver, tobacco, and tonka bean. And the tobacco adds this extra layer here. It adds this extra layer of uh, masculinity to me. You know, this is a working man in the, in the 50s and 60s who had, gets his hands dirty with grease, you know. And then he's out in the park smoking cigarettes, but he's not just hanging out with his hooligan friends. He's watching his kids play on the uh, on the playground. You know, he's a family man, and but his hands are greasy. He's a working man, you know, but he's with nature. That's the feeling of vetiver to me. It's such a beautiful fragrance. But if you want to see Guerlain go down the road of maybe trying to get a little bit closer to vetiver extraordinaire i said this in my review of vetiver extraordinaire yes uh when i did the review a week or two ago uh, i said vetiver extreme by guerlain is almost like guerlain trying to take guerlain vetiver and move it closer to vetiver extraordinaire which this came out about um six or seven years i think six years maybe five or six years after because this came out in the early 2000s this came out in 2007 and so Vetiver Extreme, to me, is like um, Guerlain trying to go more to the spicy Vetiver, which is how Vetiver Extraordinaire opens, but they've removed that tobacco note. So imagine Guerlain's Vetiver without the tobacco note and a little bit spicier, and, and maybe the Vetiver itself is slightly earthier, but the tobacco being absent... Um, Plays tricks with your nose. Sometimes it feels a little bit darker. You know, uh, you get barbershop elements here. It's just a be both of them are absolutely beautiful. You can't go wrong with either. And I got this for 50 bucks, which is a steal. Uh, I've seen bottles still going for, you know, under 100, but I'm sure prices will continue to go up. I don't know if this is discontinued or what, but um, I doubt people are running out to buy vetiver extreme right now but something to keep on your radar if you're interested in vetiver and probably one of the greatest fragrances of all time rich mitch put this as number one on his top 10 leathers they he did a live stream with eugene where they ranked their top 10 leather perfumes and this was actually rich mitch's favorite from his entire collection um i can't it can't you can't argue with it right I mean, the only thing I would say is I like Antaeus more because Antaeus is more bold and daring, and that fits my personality more personally. This is more posh and smooth. Maybe this will be my favorite fragrance when I'm 60, right? But now at 37, give me Antaeus. Give me something with some a uh, little bit more intestinal fortitude. This is so smooth and classy, and, you know, but the, the spices, again, uh, if you have your little pen out, and you're making an asterisk next to the ones that are really nutmeg, spicy, heavy. This combination of nutmeg and pimento, okay, with the citrusy opening and um, green mugwort and peppermint. And yes, there is a peppermint note in the Vintage Derby. Doesn't seem to make sense, but it's there. Uh, mixing with the spices before the leather note really comes to take over. Uh, is just, I mean, it's one of the greatest masculines of all time. This is, uh, this is C-suite. This is CEO, you know. This is, um, this is, you pull up in a Rolls Royce, but you're not driving, you're sitting in the back seat, you know. The driver opens the door for you, you get out, and everyone stops and looks, you know. That's derby to me. And you don't take the elevator with everyone else. You take the executive elevator, you know. It, it takes you past the riffraff, right? That's Derby. It's um, it's that kind of fragrance. I mean, it is, it is posh, top of the line. Um, shame it's discontinued. Shame on you, Guerlain. Absolute shame that they discontinued it twice, not just once. Okay. Um, next on the list, we have some fragrances from the House of Javoy, and the first one is called. 
The first one is called La Enfant Terrible, and this is discontinued, unfortunately. If you like uh, Serge Luton's Feminita Dubois, this is like a more... Imagine Feminita Dubois back when it was in the Shiseido bottle, before it went into the Serge Luton bottle. That's basically what you get with the way that the fragrance feels with the depth, because this is a very... Um, this is such a great fragrance. One of the best Javois. I can't believe they discontinued this. Um, spicy, woody. There is a cumin note in here, okay? So I don't think there's as much. This is, that's the whole point of the name. L'Enfant Terrible, the terrible child is what that basically stands for. And cumin is the terrible child. It's supposed to be running around making a muck, right? Uh, I don't think it runs around and makes a muck at all. I think this fragrance is beautiful just as it is. The cumin and nutmeg with those herbaceous green notes with that date and the way that the woods are blended. There's orange tree wood, sandalwood, cedar, and musk. And the sandalwood in here is one of my favorite iterations of a, let's say, synthetic sandalwood, right? Um, not the real Mysore sandalwood from the, that you smell in 70s and 80s fragrances, right? But you know, modern niche houses are usually using some sort of sandalwood, you know, um, creep molecule. Uh, there's a bunch of them that are out there. I don't know what Javoy used here, but however the perfumer blended this, and it's uh, Jacques Fleury, by the way. Wow, what a what a creation this ended up being. So one of the reasons that I never hunted down one of those vintage Shiseido Serge um, uh, Feminita Dubois bottles because I have this. L'Enfant Terrible, I love it. And then we've got another Javoy, which doesn't get enough talk. This is Incident Diplomatique. And again, if you're a vetiver lover, there's multiple types of vetiver in here. Haitian vetiver and Java vetiver with uh, nutmeg, patchouli, sandalwood, and mandarin orange in the top. Again, woody, spicy, and... Um, executive level it smells expensive it smells like you're smelling a guy in a three-piece suit on an elevator right that's the vibe of incident diplomatique it's a beautiful fragrance uh someone who's very busy you know running around at an airport getting on a flight to catch an important meeting that's the feeling of uh of incident diplomatique okay next on the list we have a Comme des Garçons fragrance and it's the only Comme des Garçons fragrance on the list and it's actually probably my favorite Comme des Garçons fragrance, period. It's from 2004 by Mark Buxton, probably my favorite Mark Buxton creation as well. And this is called Two Man. And Two Man is so, so good. Um, it's woody, spicy, smoky. Uh, there's a saffron blossom note in here with frankincense, mahogany wood, which is an underutilized woody type of note uh, with leather, vetiver, curly mint, kumquat and nutmeg and again if you have your little pen out you can make a little asterisk next to Comme des Garçons too uh it's so good the spices in here mixed with the woody notes and the frankincense and the smoky notes is it's just very unique very you know if someone wore this as their signature scent you would really be able to pick them out every single day it's a beautiful fragrance beautiful creation and then we've got a Cartier fragrance, and this is called Santos de Cartier. One of my, probably my favorite Cartier creation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say my favorite Cartier creation. I don't think there's anything better than Santos for me. Uh, spicy, woody. It's got the freshness, though, of juniper and lavender, bergamot, basil, lemon vervain. But the heart is this lovely, beautiful combination of nutmeg, pepper and rosemary, geranium, there's some vetiver, there's amber, there's a little bit of castorium, but don't think uh, Antaeus or any of those hardcore 80s fragrances. This is what the person who didn't want to wear Antaeus or Koros or, you know, one of those heavy animalic 80s fragrances, this is what they wear, wore. This is uh, very smooth and posh. You know, these two fragrances for me actually kind of play in, in, a, in a similar sandbox. They don't smell the same, but they've, they've 
create the same image in my mind. I just imagine someone extremely posh, very well-mannered, very well-spoken, that kind of person, educated, uh, caring, elegant, uh, with class, you know, someone with style. That's that's what uh, Santos and, and uh, Derby bring up in my mind. And then in 2012, so a dec over a decade ago, uh, Cartier released this little bad boy, Declaration Dune Soir. And Declaration Dune Soir, I have to do a video on this. It's a it's a, a flanker to Declaration, obviously. Uh, and the addition here, the big addition, is this rose note. And it's a beautiful masculine rose. Uh, slightly fresh, floral. Uh, the woods from the sandalwood and the spices from the cardamom, cumin, pepper, and nutmeg just work beautifully here. Uh, so I ha and it comes in this nice little, this is a 12 and a half mil bottle. Perfect little bottle for a collector. It comes in this easy to carry pouch. Thanks for making this size Cartier. That's a, I like, I like houses that make smaller sizes like that. Cause sometimes you don't always need hundred mils, you know, 10, 20, 30 mils when you're a collector is sometimes a, more than enough juice. Now I love this fragrance, but I hate this bottle because it leaks and you can see it leaking right there. I haven't sprayed this in months and yet it just leaks from the top uh, all over. It's, it's infuriating. And I've probably used five mils of this. The rest is all gone from evaporation, from leakage. And there's nothing I can do about it. I wipe it. It just, it just leaks constantly. No clue why. Just a shitty design. And this is probably Jeremy's greatest recommendation. Jeremy hyped this at one point. It's L'Envon's Avant-Garde. And it's a sweet, spicy fragrance. And you know how I've often said I don't like sweet fragrances? Well, there are some exceptions to the rule, as there always are in life. And one of them is when sweet notes are mixed with tobacco. The other one is when sweet notes are mixed with liquor. And, or sometimes that Oriental Middle Eastern style I like as well. This is um, bergamot, pink pepper, black pepper, juniper, beeswax. I love beeswax and honey. Cardamom, lavender, nutmeg, amber, benzoin, georgie wood, tobacco, vetiver, and cedar. And this is made by uh, Shayamala Mesandu, who was the wife of um, Mr. Mesandu. I can't remember his first name, but he was also a perfumer. They'd done some things together as a team. Uh, I think they're divorced now. I'm not 100% sure, but, um, but yes, great uh, perfumer. And she actually rode with at the end of this book, Gabe Oppenheim goes to Pierre Bourdon's house, the ghost perfumer, uh, and she's there with him. They go together. So yes, uh, she is in the fragrance game and, and well-known in the industry. And then we're going to do some rosias. So the first one we're going to talk about is my favorite Roja Dove creation, and it is Diagalev. And yes, this is all the juice I have left. Sadly, I cherish every drop of Diagalev. It's one of my favorite Sheepras to wear. Just smelling it from the atomizer, my God, it just, it does something to my brain. I mean, it's, uh, oh, I, I just, you know, I know a lot of people give Roja shit and he deserves it quite honestly. And I think he knows he deserves it. But on the other side of the coin, there's stuff like this. Um, it's just, I mean, it, it, I'm literally at a loss for words. It's, there's a million notes in here. Uh, it smells a little bit like a blend between Mitsuko meets um, Rochas Femme meets uh, Bandi or Azure from Estee Lauder or something like that. There's some fruity touches from the peach and, but it's really uh, a, a Sheepra through and through, an animalic Sheepra. There's tarragon in the top, which is one of my secret notes. Secret ingredients, one of my favorite notes is tarragon. If I see tarragon in a fragrance, I'll usually like it. And um, there's nutmeg in the base, uh, along with a million other notes. Uh, it smells like sex on the skin, is what it smells like. It smells like uh, very sexualized Sheepra. Love it. One of my favorites. And then we have a couple other Rojas. That was 2010, Diagolev came out. 2011. Roja Dove put out this, and this is a vintage bottle. Uh, this is called Scandal. This is how his packaging used to come in. 
back in the day, these paper label bottles. Um, and I actually traded for this. I traded a partial of Aventus for this. And so we both were happy because I still have like three bottles of vintage Aventus. And now I've got Scandal uh, Porum uh, Eau de Parfum in the vintage uh, paper label, which is, and you can see the old caps. They didn't have diamonds all over them. They were just this. Uh, this is a Fougere. This is Roja's take on, you know, Chanel Pour Monsieur, um, that kind of feeling, you know, it's, it's that kind of a, a fragrance. Uh, and it's, um, again, a million notes, basil, tarragon, lavender, jasmine from grass, violet, lily of the valley, may rose, cardamom, cashmeran, ambergris, labdanum clove, cedarwood, uh, mossy notes, which probably means some sort of oak moss that has the, you know, bad parts taken out, musk and nutmeg, and patchouli and rhubarb and sandalwood and tonka bean and vetiver, again, a million notes, but it's a take on a classic fougere. It's like if you wanted to wear, uh, those fougeres that we know and love from the 70s and 80s that are out of date right now, out of fashion, but you want it to smell more niche and modern, there you go. Scandal Pour Uh Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. The only thing that sucks about this is, doesn't it look like they put this on sideways, like it's not even straight? Like a, like a three-year-old uh, that, wrote that on there. Anyways... Next Roja we're going to talk about is the original Roja uh, Oud, which um, I don't think I talked about this earlier, but uh, I have not done a video on this one yet. I still have enough juice here, and I have a little, I think maybe two mil sample as well, so I still have enough juice. I'm gonna wear this some more. This fragrance is uh, compared to a perfume that I did a review on, and the name, uh, I can never remember the name, but there was a there was a fragrance that came after this that, that copied it. Uh, let's see if I have it right here. Um... Do I have it right here? No, no, I don't. I don't have it right here. I'd have to look for it. Um, actually, you know what? I think I do. I think I do. I think it's right here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, it's from the house of um, Moresque, and it's called Amiro, I believe. A Miro, and I have a video on this on the channel, and these two smell very, very close. Apparently, Moresque is a pretty expensive house, but this is thanks to my good friend Arm Armando, and um, and so Roja's Oud came out in 2011, and it is a heavy take with a lot of rose. A lot of cinnamon and cash, you know, he loves cashmeran and stuff like that, leathery notes, and uh, there's nutmeg in the base again. And then in 2012, he put out Roja's Vetiver Pour Homme Parfum, which this is probably the one uh, that I regret buying a full bottle of most. There was no reason for this when I already have Guerlain's Vetiver. Um, this gets compared to Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver a lot. Uh, and so even that may have been a better buy value for money, but hey, it's okay. I mean, you can't win them all. This was a blind buy and I take full responsibility for my blind buys. I don't, you know, talk shit about the reviewer that said good things about it. I don't say they forced me to. I take responsibility myself. Go figure, right? Uh, if I buy blind buy something, it's on me. And this is Bergamot Lemon. Uh, let's say a Kubiba, which is that Asian uh, shrub that kind of is used to uh, extend the citrus notes. Jasmine from grass, may rose, cystus, cedar needles, cedar wood, caraway, celery seeds, galbanum, guycwood, nutmeg, oak moss, pepper, pink pepper, vetiver, uh, labdanum, and amaris. So the nutmeg, again, is in the base, which is a very strange... You see, normally the nutmeg's in the, in the heart, and in Roja fragrances, it's almost... Uh, always in the base from the ones we've talked about so far. And then we have a 
fragrance that again I don't have a full review on the channel. I'm I'm waiting to do uh, the original Oud first, but this is Musk Oud from 2013. And Musk Oud from 2013 is probably the uh, weakest of the bunch from me because of the uh, longevity. Usually I don't talk about sillage and projection and all that stuff on the channel. This is a beautiful fragrance. If you could respray every hour, you'd be the best smelling guy in the world. But um, to respray a 750 pound fragrance or whatever he charges now, you know, every hour or two is insane. Uh, it, this adds birch, oud, labdanum, and all, you know, the, the heart notes is very similar to the regular oud with the floral heart. Uh, and again, nutmeg is in the base, but they've, they've increased the musk here. Um, but it just doesn't last for some reason. This one just does not last on me. And then we have a 2014 release, which is also discontinued. And this is called H, the exclusive oud. Parfum. So I think this was a Herod's exclusive with the, you know, green bedazzled cap, oriental, uh, woody. And what he's done here, if you know kind of the opening of um, Amouage Interlude Man, you'll kind of get an idea because what he's done is he's taken that oregano that, that was so popularized here, and he's added oregano, bergamot into this oriental uh, facet with a very similar structure. You know, again, the heart is very similar to oud and musk oud. Uh, you get um, geranium, jasmine from grass, and may rose, and then a base of oud, valerian, benzoin, birch, labdanum, nutmeg, patchouli, vetiver, here, though, he's added guarjum balsam and cypriol, but a very similar um, structure, you know, and you see it over and over and over in these rosier fragrances, and I have a full review, I believe, of H the Exclusive Oud up on the channel. If you go to my playlist and actually click on rosier, you'll be able to see all these. Okay, next on the list, we have some amouages. So the first amouage on the list is um, CL Man. CL Man is from 2003, and it's a fresh floral, and, and in Texas, you know, it's hot nine months of the year here, and this is one of my most worn amouages because it's so easy to wear in the heat. It has this silver frankincense, this rain shower vibe with lavender and rose and jasmine and nutmeg and cardamom and peach. There's a beautiful peach note with cinnamon. You know, this is before Christopher Chong took over. It's now discontinued, unfortunately, but uh, I love... CL man, it's an absolute stunner in the heat. Uh, the nutmeg is in the heart where it normally is with most fragrances. And then we have Lyric Man by Amouage. And Lyric Man, right here, is their rose. It's their it's their rose fragrance targeted for men, but really, I think Lyric Man kind of plays tricks on people because. They put the fresh rose in the masculine bottle, and they put the more animalic rose in the feminine bottle, which normally the fresh roses are um, kept back for the women. And so this is bergamot, lime, angelica, galbanum, ginger, nutmeg, rose, with a host of other notes like pine and musk and frankincense and vanilla. It's a beautiful rose, though. And the first time I smelled this, I did not think it was for me. I actually gave my mini to my mother. And then I ended up, now here I am with a bottle. I, I need, you know, I kept thinking about it and I ended up buying the fragrance again. Just a beautiful rose. Uh, and then Epic Man, one of my favorite amouages of all time. This is um, green spice on the silk road, burning in the desert with castorium in the base and myrrh and oud and leather and frankincense. And the nutmeg's in the top. And again, if you've got your little asterisk out and you're making notes, put it next to Epic Man. Uh, the nutmeg opening is stunning, stunning spicy opening. Cardamom, pink pepper, cumin, myrtle. Oh, what a what an opening. This is one of my favorite amouages. I love Epic Man. Uh, cannot believe more people don't talk about that. And then another one that has really grown on me and I don't have a bottle, but I was lucky to secure maybe like 30 of these little things. And this is called um, Opus 7. 
and this is the old uh, decans. They look like this. The new one, uh, the writing of amouage is different. You'll be able to tell. You, you'll be able to tell the difference. But uh, Reckless Leather is this spicy, woody scent with green galbanum. Um, you know, now that I'm actually thinking about the creation of this, imagine Amouage does Desandres by Le Les Abstraits. And that'll kind of give you an idea of the type of fragrance that Reckless Leather is. You know, Desandres came out 10 years after Reckless Leather. But, you know, if you know Eugene's brand, Les Abstraits, and you've smelled Desandres, you'll kind of get an idea of this. But this has more oud, and um, the, it has costus root in the dry down. The costus root, uh, this may be the best example of a costus root uh, in the base with cypriol, frankincense, and the uh, nutmeg is in the top. So it's very spicy, uh, pink pepper, cardamom, fenugreek opening. Uh, you know, if you like challenging fragrances that take a lot of twists and turns, Reckless Leather is an amazing uh, sniff. And then we're going to go on to Bracken Man. Now, Bracken Man is Amouage's take on a fougere, okay? So it's their take on a fougere. Uh, and, you know, this is uh, probably one of the most, I would say, easy to wear fragrances. But the thing about Bracken is it has a huge clove note in the top. Gigantic clove. So you get clove, lavender, and, and then it kind of falls into this classic fougere DNA. But uh, the clove and nutmeg, clove is definitely the biggest note, with nutmeg playing a supporting, nutmeg and cinnamon play like supporting spices to the clove. Uh, and there's cypress and lemon, and the lavender in here is beautiful. It's a fougere. It's a through and through fougere. I mean, you can see the fern on the front of the bottle. And that's literally what fougere translates to. Fern-like is what fougere translates to. So yes, Bracken Man is, um, is, a, is a stunner if you like clove. If you like clove. And then 2019, and I think of this as Christopher Chong. Actually, wait, 2018 first. 2018 first is uh, Imitation Man. And Imitation Man is this um, floral, leathery fragrance that has touches of uh, vinyl, you know, vinyl records, because it's supposed to be Christopher Chong's childhood in the 70s. There's iris, there's violet, there's Turkish rose, there's uh, citron fruit, which is a very rindy fruit. There's almost no, like, juices in citron. It's very rindy with nutmeg and black pepper in the top and then castorium and patchouli in the base. And again, if you've smelled uh, Eugene's Les Abstraits brand, La Dulé Exquise, I think these two kind of share some similarities, if you will. Um, and this came out in 2018. Yeah, uh, Imitation Man's the very first thing I said that uh, Le Dulé Exquise reminded me of. Most people were saying Portrait of a Lady. I instantly said Imitation Man. And now we have Christopher Chong's, what I think of as kind of his uh, bow out, if you will. The curtains are closing. And you can see the curtains kind of moving up and down. Cool little graphics on the front. This is Overture Man by Amouage. One of my favorite Amouage's fragrances, at least in the new line. Oh, God. I'll tell you what, man. This is so good. That grapefruit, cumin, cognac combo with nutmeg and saffron and ginger. What an opening. And then, of course, you get the animalic leathery dry down with resins. And oh, this, this is what an Amouage should be. Very, very uh, deep and unique and challenging and I, I love overture huge love to overture man okay i think we're about halfway through you guys got your seat belts on let's get this going next on the list we have kenzo jungle porom so kenzo jungle um is another one of these overlooked fragrances that is now discontinued lost to the sands of time very sad because this is one of the best Spicy fragrances, in my opinion. Again, if you have your asterisk out, you're making notes, put Kenzo Jungle Porom on the list. Um, lime, nutmeg, mate, tea, cinnamon, benzoin, gaiac wood, and cedar. And then we have an 80s baby through and through. This is Obsession for Men. And if you can find this one that says Cologne Spray, I have all three versions. I have the modern Coty version. 
I have the version before this that was done by Calvin Klein Cosmetics that said uh, Obsession Eau de Toilette, and I have this one. I can tell you that this is out of this world. One of the best, um, you know, I actually did a, a, a ranking of synthetic musk fragrances, and this was very close to the top. The only reason this wasn't at the top is the Arige La Dore's uh, that use synthetic musk speed it out. But uh, Obsession for Men is out of this world. Good. So 80s. Give you an idea of that 80s spicy oriental for men. And then we've got some zoologists, two to be exact. Actually, there's three, but I didn't want to pull down Chipmunk. Chipmunk could be on the list, but but I think it had Nutmeg as well. Um, and uh, But the two I'm going to highlight are Tyrannosaurus Rex is one. And this is an insane fragrance. Huge, smoky, resinous Imagine um, you're smelling like the entrails of the comet that hit Earth 65 million years ago, right? And, I mean, it's literally like burning in the atmosphere as it's coming down, right? The, the asteroid, sorry. The asteroid that hit Earth. And, I mean, it's literally burning in the atmosphere. And then you, you smell like blood from the dinosaurs when, when it hits. It's the craziest. Like this dinosaur flesh being oxidized. Insane. Um, Tyrannosaurus Rex, though, is probably my favorite from Antonio Gardoni, I'll tell you that. I like it better than anything I've smelled from his Bogwe brand. And then we have the main, the main, the only um, zoologist that I have a full bottle of. And by the way, the nutmeg in T-Rex is in the top. The only one I have a full bottle of is uh, Moth. And moth is black pepper, cinnamon, clove, cumin, nutmeg, saffron, lemon, heliotrope, iris, jasmine, rose, mimosa, lily of the valley, smoke, guyquwood, oud, vetiver, nagamatha, patchouli, ambergris, honey, resins, and musk. So again, the nutmeg's in the top on both of these zoologists we're highlighting. And then we have a Davidoff fragrance, and this is called Amber Blend. So Amber Blend is, um, I think, one of the best uh, designer ambers out there. This is so good to me. It has a little bit of everything. It's got a little bit of rum absolute, which makes it feel kind of modernized. There's nutmeg and cinnamon in the top, and that amber and peru balsam with sandalwood in the base is beautiful. It's just a, it's just a beautiful, um, designer amber, all right? So, you know, do I think it's the best amber fragrance in the world? No. Uh, but it's a very good designer. Speaking of decent designers, uh, this is called Chiruti 18, 1881 Bella Notte. And you can see the 1881 bottles. They all kind of look like this. But this is uh, spicy, woody. It's Sichuan pepper, coriander, juniper, key lime, night blooming jasmine, Ceylon cinnamon, nutmeg, black cardamom, cedar, musk, patchouli, and vanilla. So the nutmeg's in the heart. This is a very well done, spicy, woody uh, designer. It's done by Olivier Cresp. You know he knows what he's doing, and um, no one talks about that. That's that's law. You know, it's kind of like a throwaway fragrance to some people, but I think it's really good. And then we've got some Ancre Noir, but not the one you're thinking of. This is Ancre Noir Sport. An amazing vetiver for the heat, stunning vetiver for the heat. Uh, gets completely overlooked, so close to smelling the real essential oil from vetiver. Grapefruit, lavender, bergamot, cypress, aquatic notes, nutmeg, bourbon vetiver, Haitian vetiver, musk, and cashmere, cashmere woods. Um, just a beautiful vetiver for the heat. I love Ancre Noir Sport. Probably the only fra one of the only fragrances in the world where you'd look at it and go, there's no way in hell they made a sport flanker of Ancre Noir. And they did, and it works. All right, let's do a couple malls. We're going to do a father and son combo. So first is Le Parfum de Therese. And Le Parfum de Therese is Edmund Rudnitska, who is a master, the master. Many people consider him the greatest uh, perfumer of all time. Of course, he taught people like... Uh, uh, Jean-Claude Elena and Pierre Bourdon and stuff like that. Um, he only had a couple big uh, uh, pupils, 
And those were the two main ones along with his son, which is coming up next. And this is jasmine, mandarin orange, melon, pepper, nutmeg, plum, rose, violet, leather, vetiver, and cedar. And his son, uh, Michel Rudnitska, said that he thinks that this is his father's masterpiece. Go figure. He made this as a bespoke fragrance for his wife. It was only after some prodding or begging, depending on which source you listen to, that um, Edmund Rudnitska, uh, as a state, allowed... Um, Frederick Mall to use the formula. And this is a vintage pre-Estee Lauder bottle. Oh, thank God. Okay, next is another pre-vintage Estee Lauder bottle of Noir Apice. And this is what actually got me down this path because I bought the modern and I was like, no way. This can't be what people are hyping. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Uh, it has to have been reformulated. And sure enough, it has been. I did a comparison video uh, where we compared the vintage Noir piece to the modern. And um, this is worth the buy in the vintage. Don't buy the modern. Don't bother, in my opinion. Don't bother. Uh, but if you're keeping track of your asterisks, this may even be top three as far as like nutmeg fragrances go for me. The spices in here are stunning. They're so beautiful. Uh, the spices in here are showstoppers. You know, it's not going to have the heavy vanilla of most um, Orientals, but you really get this Oriental vibe. But imagine this orangey Oriental with a lot of spice, heavily dosed spice, uh, minus that vanilla. So there's some patchouli and sandalwood, and it's woody with cedar wood and stuff like that. But um, I, I really love the way that the nutmeg is done in Noir Peace. And then we've got a Creed, and this is called Himalaya. And Himalaya very clearly kind of takes notes, if you ask me, from um, XS Pour Homme by Paco Rabanne. So Himalaya uh, came out a couple years after XS and clearly takes notes. And so Himalaya is um, bergamot, grapefruit, mandarin orange, lemon, pink pepper, the nutmeg is in the heart with a lot of other spices, and there's a gun pepper, gunpowder, sorry, gunpowder note in here. I was reading pepper, but I wanted to say powder. With Creed's musky amber gris dry down. Don't buy these 100 ml bottles, honestly. Learn from me. Learn from my mistakes. Uh, only buy the Creed's from, even though this is a 2017 bottle, don't buy these uh, 100 mils. Go, go, go 75 or 120, the discontinued ones, in my opinion. Uh, the older Creed, the older the Creed, the better. And then we've got um, a Burberry fragrance, and this is Burberry Touch for men. And this is a huge musk, gigantic white musk, um, very fresh, and it came out in 2000, supposed to be like for the new man, new millennia kind of thing, with some violet leaf, Davana, and the nutmeg, and, and white pepper, and cedars in the heart. Uh, really easy to wear. You know, you could wear that to the office in the in the heat of summer. You won't offend anyone. And then we've got some Bortnikovs. So uh, let me grab these Bortnikovs here. So we have three Bortnikovs we want to talk about with nutmeg today. The first one is called Mysterious Oud. And you can pause that if you want to really get the note listing. But Mysterious Oud is basically an Oriental Oud. It's still available for purchase as far as I'm aware. Um, Mysterious Oud is cardamom, amber, rose, castorium, nutmegs in the heart, along with a bunch of different ouds and resins like uh, tolu balsam, a papanax, which is sweet myrrh. Uh, imagine a, or, a real heavy oriental style on Oud. Very well done. Not my favorite Bortnikoff, though, but very well done. That came out in 2018. In 2019, we had musk. Habib, and this is what I talked about earlier being uh, discontinued. It made my top 10 real musk fragrance list, which I also could have added the one that's coming after this because it also has real musk, and they smell somewhat similar. It's kind of like this uh, animalic uh, musky take on a Shepra creation, okay? Um, and there's uh, cardamom that, you know, that cardamom opening has really... 
uh, cemented in my brain with Bortnikoff's DNA. And there's nutmeg in the top with the real musk and ambergris in the base. One of my favorite real musk fragrances. And apparently, if you can find these older wooden caps version, that's the one you want. The newer ones with the cap I just showed on the previous bottle, they say have been reformulated. But now, they're they're discontinued. So it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's, it's not on the Bortnikoff website anymore. Very sad. And then, the one from uh, 2020 is Chypre du Nord. And I think Chypre du Nord is probably a little bit redundant if you already own Musk Habib. Because Musk, Musk Habib is a Chypre. Uh, and this actually has real Siberian deer musk. This could have been in my um, real musk video. They've added the note of peach and some birch tar and, you know, stuff like that to make it seem more like a, like a classic Chypre. I love both, but they they have a very similar smell because of the Siberian deer musk used in both. But um, but yes, I think Chypre du Nord is still available for purchase. And the nutmeg note is in the heart. And then we've got a sweet leather, which usually I don't like sweet leathers, but I think this one's okay. You know, if you like this kind of thing. Uh, I've never smelled the new version though. Mine's the older one with the little thingy here. Doesn't come like this anymore. Uh, this is a grass note and it's very evident. Look at the color of the juice. It almost has that green grassy look. Grass, violet, saffron, nutmeg, vetiver, jasmine sambach, sandalwood, vanilla, cashmere, and suede. If you like sweet leathers, this could be one of your favorite fragrances. For me, it's tough to wear because I don't, I like the 80s leathers. Give me Bella Me any day. You know what I mean? Uh, but I will wear that from time to time. And then I've got a Lotisan, and this is Lo de Ombre Extreme. So earlier I mentioned Ombre Perso by Maitrier Parfumé Agantier, and these are like two reference ambers. A lot, some people talk about the Ombre Perso. I hardly ever hear anyone talk about Lo de Ombre Extreme. Rich Mitch just got himself a bottle, I think a month or two ago. And he was just talking about how amazing it is, and I completely agree with him, uh, as usual. He um, uh, just talked about just it smells like an amazing high-quality amber with spices. There's cardamom, nutmeg, mace, and pepper. And if you want your, um, you know, if you want some more spices in your amber fragrance, this is definitely one to check out. And this is Jean-Claude Elena, so it's very well done. There's a beautiful Turkish rose note in there, beautiful amber. Uh, and here's a very complex fragrance, Ivory de Balmain. Uh, this is the 80s version. They re-released it. They um, re-released Ivory, I think like a decade ago, maybe 15 years ago. I can't remember. But um, it's this is the older version that you want. It looks like this. It's uh, aldehydes and artemisia and a bunch of citruses and floral heart with pepper and nutmegs in the heart as well and oak moss, amber, there's a raspberry note in the base. It's an insanely complex fragrance. Uh, but if you like uh, Chypres, floral Chypres, one to put on the list. And then we have a discontinued fragrance. Very sad to hear this is discontinued too. It's Animal Animal for men. Uh, and I think this is a really good fragrance. I've been saying that for a year now. And this is kind of a take on Amen. So... Amen uh, and Animal Animal kind of share some similarities, but what's different is, is this came out first. Amen gets all the love. This actually came out in 1994. Now, it came out after Angel, which this shares a little bit. It smells like it took bits and pieces from Angel for Women by Terry Mugler, which was Olivier Cresp's kind of masterpiece at the time uh, that blew up. I mean, it was the, the popular thing in, in the early to mid-90s. Um, and made it for men. And, and they did it first. And then Thierry Mugler did it in Amen in 96, two years later. So this deserves much more love. There's nutmeg, tobacco, vanilla, pineapple, lavender. It's kind of like how that pineapple note is in Lapidus Pour Homme from, from 87. You would never think pineapple works, but it does, right? Very similar. And then one of my uh, favorite Van Cleef and Arpel fragrances. And if you're a vintage lover... This is a must sniff. Nothing's a must buy, but you want to put this on your to sniff list. This is Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme. So sad this is discontinued. Thank God I have a backup. 1978, lavender, nutmeg, myrtle, sage, juniper, 
Artemisia, the rose note in here with the uh, that leathery Shepra like dry down. This is basically a leather Shepra, but with a huge dark rose note. Uh, you know, Phantom of the Opera dark rose, beautiful. And then we've got some Bogart fragrances. So the first one is going to be. Oh no, where is it? Did I take it out? Uh-oh, we have a missing fragrance, folks. We have an emergency. Ah, I found you. This is Bogart Signature. Now, the new bottles come in this green packaging. They're both amazing. I've done a comparison video. It's basically a green, spicy. Uh, this is supposed to be a Shepra, if memory serves, but it gets compared to Paco Rabanne Perome, which is a Fougere. And there are elements of both in here. But what's added here, the nutmeg's in the top. It has rosemary, which will remind you of Paco Rabanne Perome. And there's a Russian leather note in here which kind of just kind of creeps up on you in the same way that the Russian leather note in Pavarotti uh, creeps up on you. And I love them both. I think this is such a great fragrance. If you like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, check out uh, Jacques Bogart. Uh, it's just called Bogart. Uh, it's just called uh, Bogart by Jacques Bogart, but it's actually, people refer to it as signature because it looks like there's a pen writing the name uh, from 1975. And then in 1980, there was a fragrance called One Man Show, and this is the exact opposite of Bogart, where, as I said, get either version of Bogart Signature, the modern or the vintage. This one I'm going to tell you to get only the vintage. Get the one that says 85 proof volume at the bottom, because I have the new one, and it is shite. They should have discontinued this. The, the, the reformulation is, is a pathetic, terrible reformulation. Uh, nothing like the the true uh, original one man show. Uh, the they, they've completely neutered that leathery castorium animalic green dry down. Uh, all all you're left with is this kind of uh, boring green fragrance in the new one. This one adds all of the spices, all of the depth, the animalic growl, the leather. There's cystus labdanum in here, and the nutmeg is in the heart. And then they put out this little bad boy in 19, uh, sorry, 2010, and this is called Riviera Nights, and I think this is still available to purchase, but if you like fragrances like uh, La Nuit de Lome, the cardamom in here will remind you of La Nuit de Lome. There's also nutmeg and dried fruits in the heart. Okay, next on the list is a discontinued Azaro. Very sad to say this is discontinued too, and this is called Visit for Men. And this used to be a cheapie. I got this for like 20 bucks, this 100 mil. It's going for way more than 20 bucks now, I'll tell you that. But Azaro Visit is cardamom, nutmeg, pink pepper, ambergris, musk, frankincense, blue Lebanon cedar, and guyac wood. And it's made by Anique Minardo of Fermanish. Shout out to Anique Minardo, one of my favorite perfumers. Everything she touches is primo. And then we've got a new addition to the collection. I got this a couple months back. It's Kenneth Cole Black. I paid $9 for this. Uh, it's a, uh, what is this? I forgot what this was. Well, it's not much. It's like 15 mil or something like that. Uh, it's a fresh citrusy, uh, maybe 20. I don't remember how big this bottle is, but it's a uh, fresh citrusy take. It's kind of like a great fragrance for summer, actually, if you ask me. There's nutmeg in the heart, along with lotus, frankincense, and cedar, amber, musk, and violet leaf in the dry down. It's very, you know, it was competing against fragrances like this. So these two, while they don't smell alike, they kind of share some commonalities. You'll, you'll, if you like one, you'll like another. They're both kind of fresh, easy to wear. But I don't think they're bad. I think they're both good fragrances. Okay. Next on the list, we have a discontinued fragrance again. Uh, you guys know I love my discontinued fragrances, and I only have one beef about this, and that's that the cap is broken right here, and the, cap, and the actual sprayer is broken. It still sprays, but it's kind of shite. You've got to really finagle it in there. Um, but the fragrance, oh, I can't believe this is a designer. 
It's so complex, and if you just spray this and you don't give it time, you'll be like, I have no clue what Ramsey's talking about. There's nothing special about this. There is something special about this. This is everything. The slogan was the antidote to the boring designer fragrance, and I'm so glad I got the big boy. This is the 100 and, um, 125 mil, I believe. Yeah, 125 mil bottle. I'm so glad I got the big boy. Uh, it's spicy, citrusy, minty, floral, um, leathery, woody. There's patchouli, there's vanilla, there's iris, there's everything. Lavender, violet, orange blossom. It has a little bit of everything and yet it works. It's beautiful. Not a beast. You gotta reapply every four or five hours, but man, what a fragrance they created. Um, and the nutmegs in the heart. Okay, next on the list needs no introduction, Fahrenheit. One of the greatest fragrances of all time. This is an 89 batch mini. Uh, and I mean, what can you say? Rich Mitch in his top 10 leathers said that there is this viscosity to this fragrance. And I thought that was a great way to describe Fahrenheit. There is some viscosity to Fahrenheit. Uh, oiliness, you know, gasoline, you're at the pump pumping gas while your hot dates in the car in the passenger seat, right? You guys are going to go out and party and have a good time. That's the feeling of Fahrenheit to me. Um, it is the bad boy vibe, you know. Uh, there's that fuel in, but I like it more than I like, um, you know, something like this. I mentioned this was a very good take on jet fuel and suede, but honestly, since I have multiple bottles, I've got a 200 mil bottle of Fahrenheit, I've got a 50 mil vintage mini, I've got the 10 mil mini, there's just no reason for me to spend the money on something like this, although this is very good. Uh, the nutmeg on Fahrenheit's in the heart, by the way. And then we have one of my favorite fragrances of all time, YSL Jazz. I absolutely adore Jazz for an easy to wear, um, spicy wood, oh God. Oh, I have three bottles of this in the vintage piano key bottle and spicy, woody. It's just, I could wear this anytime, just like your Lawn's Heritage. I can wear this anytime. Anise, cardamom, lavender, nutmeg in the heart, uh, in, the t in the top, sorry. The heart is carnation, geranium, iris, and jasmine. You might put a, maybe just a mini asterisk next to this one. The, car the, the cardamom, nutmeg, anise. Tarragon also gives off anise touches in the top. I mean, what a what an opening. Uh, what a fragrance altogether. It dries down to this Oak moss, leather, tobacco with woods. What more could a guy like me ask for? It has everything. I love jazz. Love it. And then, all right, we're down to the home stretch. See if we can get done close to two, two and a half, two, two hours and 15 minutes. We have MDCI's Le Elegant. Le Elegant is a 2021 release, woody, spicy. It's not bad. It's just not good enough for a full bottle. Hence why I have a decant. This is, um, Frankincense, saffron, cardamom, black pepper, iris, honey, cinnamon, nutmeg, cumin, divana, sandalwood, musk, tonka bean, labdanum, cystus, oud, and cashmere. And it was done by Irene Farmachidi. And sorry, Irene, if I mispronounce your name, but the um, uh, fragrance feels a little safe, you know, like they were trying to play it safe. It feels like an upscale designer, which that's not what I want. I'd rather wear, you know, Sheep or Palaton by MDCI or something like that. Okay. Next on the list, we have a Latafa, believe it or not, a, a Latafa. And I thought this was discontinued, but it says it's still available for purchase. It's Amir Al Oud Intense Oud. Hell of a name, eh? But it basically smells like burnt sugar and, you know, sweet saffron, Middle Eastern Oud. Uh, I think I paid like $18 for this 100 mil. The bottle's heavier than any of these I've picked up. The glass, I mean... The, the cap is heavier than maybe any cap here. I have no clue how Latafa does it um, with these presentations. Now, the glass isn't high quality glass. You can see the imperfections, but still, it's uh, very heavy. And uh, it's saffron, nutmeg in the top with oud and vanilla. And if you like stuff like by the fireplace, there you go. All right, next on the list, we have a John Barbados fragrance. Sorry, we're going to hold off on the John Barbados. First, we're going to do a Killian fragrance. And we have a Killian fragrance called, and this is discontinued, um, in its little black coffin. Uh, this is 
straight to heaven extreme with the little key that you can actually lock the stupid box with. Um, straight to heaven extreme is straight to heaven, but more basically. It's um, it's it lasts longer. It's thicker. It's fuller. It's got rum absolute, bourbon vanilla absolute, nutmeg amber, patchouli, and cedarwood. And I've often said that. Um, you know, buy the refills. Don't buy the full presentation like I did, which is stupid, you know, for a dumb key and a, you know, just so it kind of looks cool. And I even keep this just put away. I don't even show it off. Um, so yeah, straight to heaven extreme. Uh, and now we have John Varvatos Dark Rebel, which is discontinued as well. Dark Rebel is discontinued. And um, it is done by Rodrigo Flores Rue of Givaudan, who I wish had a bigger budget. But it's leathery, spicy, smoky. It's got Jamaican rum and cardamom and the um, tobacco leaf and, and uh, akigala wood. But just a little bit of akigala wood. It's not dosed like, uh, you know, the way Queen Tom Beach, he of Beach Mode does akigala wood. It's not like that. Uh, this is much more... Um, much more intelligently dosed. The only problem is this literally lasts like three hours on me and then I have to reapply. It does not last long at all. But for those three hours, it's beautiful. Um, and I think it's a very well-made designer. I would love to see what Rodrigo Flores Rue could do with a bigger budget. Um, but uh, but I actually prefer Dark Rebel Rider, which does not have nutmeg, so it's not on the list. But uh, the nutmeg note is in the heart. And then we've got... Molinard's Abanita Eau de Toilette. This is from uh, 1988. It's uh, oriental spicy with galbanum, petit gras, mastic, heliotrope, uh, nutmegs in the heart. And it's just one of the best oriental ambers you can imagine. It's so, so good. Uh, no one talks about this. I think this is the 1988 version. I think the original came out in the 20s. Uh, I think it celebrated 100 years recently or it's going to or something. Uh, okay, next on the list, we have a fragrance from the house of Kinski. Kinski fragrance. And this is actually called Kinski by Kinski. Uh, my favorite Giza Schoen creation of all time. That just maybe shows what a twisted or sick man I am because Kinski was a, a little bit of a nut job by the end of his life or even while, even during his life. But he, um, Oh, fuck. Forget about the problems he had as a, as a person. Put that out of your mind. Just focus on the fragrance. My God. Instantly my favorite cannabis fragrance. Instantly my favorite Giza Schoen fragrance. Uh, instantly one of my favorite Castorium fragrance. One of them. You know, it is so, so good. Unbelievable. The nutmegs in the heart, by the way. Uh, it's a, a suede and labdanum and styrax in the dry down. It's just, it's a madman's fragrance, and I love it. All right, take, take, take what you will from that. You have to have, I think, a little bit of madness to, to like that. But they do say madness and being a genius kind of go hand in hand. Okay, next on the list, we have a fragrance from the house of Orlane, which also was known as Jean de Albert back in the day. Uh, now it's known as Orlane, and this is called Derek. I think the older bottles wrote Derek up here, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Derek is a spicy, woody fougere, uh, or it feels like it's a take on a fougere. I don't know. Maybe it does, it's. I don't think it's an official fougere, but it has that feeling to me: pepper, vetiver, cedar, cinnamon, ginger, coriander, nutmeg. Um, the nutmeg here is in the heart with patchouli, oak moss, and sandalwood. Very well done, oldie, that very few people talk about. Maybe because of the name. Derek is kind of a weird name. Okay, next on the list is Basile Womo. And Basile Womo from 87. Uh, apparently, someone said the new one is still pretty good, but this is long discontinued, this version. Um, it doesn't matter whether you get the Serpy or whether you get the Waruska and Joel version. Just try to get one with a short ingredient list and you'll be happy. Uh, it's basil, vervain, grapefruit, lavender, rosemary, tangerine, thyme, lemon, galbanum, clove, jasmine, nutmeg, rose, black currant, cinnamon, oak moss, leather, patchouli, sandalwood. I love these old. And you can actually see the short ingredient list right there. Um, so yes, 
alcohol, water, and parfum. And then a fragrance I've talked about over the last couple months a lot, actually, is Catalyst by the house of um, Halston. And this is the original from Halston Fragrances, Inc. And Catalyst is um, a very complex creation. It used to be a cheapie. This used to be at like TJ Maxx and stuff like that for 10 bucks. This is a Elias Armendis and Harry Fremont creation. Very spicy, woody, slightly smoky. There's a vodka note in here, which is very strange. The only other vodka fragrance that comes to mind off the top of my head is Ungaro Porlom 3 with um, tarragon, galbanum, lavender, sage. There's a mint note. Uh, nutmeg is in the heart. Okay, it's just a ton of stuff in here. Amazing fragrance. Um, and then we've got Tiffany. Tiffany for men. Uh, this is the vintage version. I have no clue what the current one smells like, if it's any good or not. But um, Tiffany for men is kind of this spicy, powdery, a little bit in the range of uh, Chanel's Pour Monsieur, but this has a little bit more oomph. There's anise in here, there's nutmeg and carnation and orris, and there's frankincense in the base. It just feels like it's a little bit thicker, you know? It's a little more base heavy, obviously, than um, Chanel's Pour Monsieur, but it's in that range. The nutmeg's in the heart. And then we've got Biblos for man, or Biblos Pour Homme, and this is uh, discontinued, kind of a citrusy, spicy, fragrance. There is some violet leaf in the top. Uh, it over, it's like kind of an aquatic, pre-aquatic, pre-aqua de jo, but it's in the 90s, so it gives off this uh, kind of like hinting at aquatics, you know? But I think it's the citruses and the earthiness uh, of the fragrance. It's a good fragrance. It's just, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite, but it is discontinued. Uh, I love collecting discontinued fragrances. And then, we have a Trusardi, and this is Trusardi Python for women. This is an amazing sandalwood, like a Oriental Gourmand sandalwood with dark chocolate, nutmegs in the heart with a rose note on a woman. This smells stunning. I mean, I will wear this, but that's sweet. You know, I like the way that they used to do gourmands in the 90s, stuff like Amen, Angel, Python uh, for women. It's It's just, I miss those days, you know? I miss the uh, gourmands of the 90s. The gourmands now are just, yeah. All right, now we have Elizabeth Taylor's Passion for Men, which you may think, oh, this is a $9 fragrance. This is an amazing fragrance. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but if you can get, I guess, a version that's a little bit older, this one's distributed by um, Parfums International. Uh, spicy, sweet, also has little ori I don't want to say oriental vibes, but the vanilla adds a layer of um, sweetness here, but the lavender and the neroli kind of give it this freshness with the bergamot and the nutmeg, and it's a beautiful creation. Great to wear to bed, just relax. It puts you in that mood, you know, that wusa mood. Okay, let's knock out some of these Loueves. So we've got Essencia. Now you want the eau de toilette, don't get the eau de parfum, get the eau de toilette. It's from 1988, spicy green, it has hints of uh, like polo green, tarragon, galbanum. Um, I know I mentioned that um, that uh, in, the, in previous videos, I mentioned that Devon is my favorite 70s masculine fragrance with uh, galbanum in the top. And this is one of my favorite 80, 80s masculine fragrances with galbanum in the top. And the nutmegs in the heart, very spicy, pine and leather, and it's just a heck of a combination. Okay, next on the list, the next Loueve is uh, Solo. And Solo, I don't like. It's a crazy take on a fruity fragrance. They stuck the note of guava in here. So I'm sure this sold great in the South American market, but for me, guava is not something, I, it didn't do it for me. Um, there is patchouli and cumin and nutmeg and cinnamon, but that guava note just makes it very weird. Um, I need to revisit it, but it's, uh, it's a strange one. And then we've got Jaipur Om. Now, Jaipur Om is uh, in Eau de Parfum or Eau de Toilette. They both have nutmeg in the heart. Uh, I think the Eau de Toilette's a little bit more masculine. It adds more of the citruses. Uh, this adds a little more of the heliotrope and vanilla. 
and it's thicker and uh, denser, you know, it has that denseness to the fragrance. This, uh, this, it's more heavy on the oriental style and the nutmeg is in the heart. And then we've got Bois 1920 Sushi Imperial. Now, uh, I think Bois 1920 was either bought out or they've gone through some changes. But if you can find these older eau de toilettes, that's what you want. Don't buy the new eau de parfums, in my opinion. Um, this is uh, Morris Parma, Italy. The new ones, I think, are marketed by Arnaway. And I don't know what they're doing with the brand, but... Uh, I'm not buying any new Bois 1920s in Eau de Parfum. Uh, bergamot, mandarin, orange, lemon, jasmine, nutmeg, pepper, rose, anise, cinnamon, patchouli, sandalwood, tonka bean, vetiver, and bourbon vanilla. If you've ever smelled opium porom, okay, from YSL, it'll get you in the ballpark of Sushi Imperial. It's a little bit more bright. Sushi Imperial is a little bit more bright from the citruses. Uh, and this has anise instead of star anise, but I think I think they're pretty darn close to the to the same note and the nutmegs in, in the heart here. Now, if you have your asterisk, you can put a big asterisk next to this one. This is a huge nutmeg to me um, with a bunch of other things, but nutmeg really stands out, especially in the opening. Another discontinued fragrance. This is called Nemo by the House of Cacherel. Now, Nemo Cacherel is nutmeg, cardamom, lavender, bomb in the opening. You do get to the caraway, the labdanum, the leather, the patchouli. This is a really good designer. A uh, really good designer. I think Anouj still has bottles of this. And it came out in 1999. It was done by Jean-Pierre Bithout. And again, the nutmeg's in the top. Huge nutmeg. And then we have Very Valentino for Men by the House of Valentino. This is um, anise, coriander, nutmeg, sage, carnation, caraway, um, tobacco, Brazilian rosewood, amber, resins, musk, sandalwood, and cedar. Again, the nutmeg's in the top. It reminds me a little bit of Dolce & Gabbana by Man, which is a discontinued and very expensive fragrance, but I think I prefer the Dolce & Gabbana in this case. And then we've got the Chanel, and it's Chanel Pour Monsieur Cologne Concentré Eau de Toilette, Cologne Concentré, which is discontinued. This version is discontinued, if you will. You get oak moss, apopanax, vanilla, vetiver with lavender, mandarin orange, petit grand, cardamom, and nutmeg in the heart. Uh, I like this much better than the regular eau de toilette. Let's put it that way. A couple more. Uh, we've got Ted Lapidus Pour Homme from 1999. The one that looks like this is different from Ted Lapidus Pour Homme from 1978, uh, which is way better than this, by the way. But this does have nutmeg with citron fruit in the top, cinnamon, lime, uh, tonka bean, white musk. It's kind of an easy to wear citrus, but it's not bad for what, for what it is. For this type of fragrance, it's not bad. All right, now we've got Lacoste Land, one of the coolest presentations, I think, ever of all time. Uh, Lacoste Land is a spicy green, think. Oh, what would I compare this to? Um, maybe, um, Eau de Hermes meets like a sport fragrance. I mean, I, I don't know. There's galbanum in here, but uh, so it is a little bit green, but it's the juniper berry and the nutmeg. And actually, you, you could put an asterisk next to land too. It's very hard to find now or at a fair price, I should say. But um, it's, a, it's a great fragrance. Lacoste used to do. And look at this presentation. Just beautiful. Okay, a couple more. Uh, the next one, then we'll be done. The next one on the list is uh, Ascada Pour Homme, and this is the Eau de Toilette, and uh, this is in that same realm as YSL Jazz Heritage, but with cognac in the top. So the nutmeg's in the heart, and it's just that patchouli, vanilla, dry down. It's beautiful. I love Ascada Pour Homme. Would love a big bottle of the Eau de Parfum. Luckily, Anuj found me a 5 mil Mini, so I am going to do a comparison video very soon. And then, two more. Cristobal by the House of Balenciaga. This is uh, the, the uh, discontinued, one of my favorite coffee and tea fragrances. It's so good. It's really grown on me. Uh, it dries down to this benzoin, warm amber with tobacco and vanilla, but there's some spices. There's coriander and nutmeg in the heart. 
uh, with geranium and sandalwood. Gerard Anthony, man, he's just a master. Although this is a very, um, I would say this is a very designer style from Gerard Anthony. And finally, the last one on the list, we've got Moschino Toy Boy. Now, this is not a bad fragrance. It's actually a really good masculine rose fragrance, I would say. But it can put some people off. You know, the spices in here, I think, can kind of put some people off because there are Indonesian nutmeg, there's pear, there's uh, clove, there's elemi, uh, there's rose, there's flax blossom, there's cashmeran, magnolia, Haitian vetiver, and there's a lot of synthetic. So there's amber max and cyclo cy cy cylocolide, uh, cylocolide, which is a Givaudan ingredient in the base. So there are some, you know, synthetics in here, but uh, in a nutshell, it's kind of a fruity from the pear, spicy from the clove and Indonesian nutmeg, uh, you know, lemony, incensey from the LME with rose. In a beautiful, you know, most men won't smell like this, so if you wear this, you will be unique and forget about the bear bottle, you know? Um, okay, we did it. This is not a top 10 nutmeg is complete. Thanks to everyone for watching, and I know this was a long video. We had the unboxings early on. We had the conversation on Scent of the Day. So thanks to everyone for watching, supporting, liking, subscribing, all of the stuff that I'm supposed to say as a YouTuber for the algorithm. But I do want to bring more people to the uh, to the channel, and we're, we're accomplishing that. We're growing very quickly. We're getting a lot of recognition. Uh, I won't divulge everything Russian Adam and I talked about, but we had a chat today and he said, Hey man, I'm in Saudi Arabia and I'm sitting with one of your fans who actually loves watching you. And I said, in Saudi Arabia? And so, um, you know, I really feel like we're bringing a community of frag heads together that just love fragrance and love to talk about fragrance without all the other BS that is involved with some of Fragcom, you know, uh, drama here, talking bad about people here, jealousy there. You know, we just want a community of, of like-minded individuals who love fragrance in one spot, and we're doing that. So thank you to everybody who's supported me and been a part of it. I, I feel really honored and blessed to, uh, to bring this content to you. So um, I hope to do some live streams on the weekend and test out some new fragrances, but do let me know what your favorite nutmeg-based perfumes are in the comments, or if I left any out, you know, include those as well, or what your favorites are from the list. Thank you, everybody. Cheers, guys. See you next time. Bye now.